Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome back to my channel. Um, hopefully you would have seen in part one, I spoke about some experimental books that I absolutely love and that have really shaped how I see and approach various parts of fiction. Um, but in this second part, I really wanted to focus in on two books in particular, um, both by Stephen Hall, uh, because I really wanted to talk about his brand new book, Maxwell's Demon. Um, and in doing so, I also really wanted to um, speak a little bit back about his uh, previous book, uh, which is The Raw Shark Texts. And these two books together for me are just such a delight. Um, just holding this differently, there we go. Uh, such absolute delights um, in how they play around with text on the page and how they do really exciting things with the idea of plots, of memory, of how we experience text um, and how we see ourselves as participants within books as well. Um, so I just think these are both absolutely brilliant and I really do encourage you to check them both out. So when I first read uh, Mark, Z. Dan Dan uh, Mark Z. Danielewski's uh, uh, House of Leaves, um, I, a friend recommended to me The Raw Shark Texts, which I've got here, by Stephen Hall. And I've had this copy ever since, actually. Um, and I have to admit, like, it's, it's a book that I really enjoyed and then hadn't, hadn't thought about in a while. And then the author brought out his latest book, Maxwell's Demon. And so I wanted to go and check this out. And um, I kind of thought back to Raw Shark Text, which has these characters kind of talking and occasionally does really quite fun, clever things with letters and emails on the page. And um, early on, we get an idea that things are going to get a bit creative when we get things like that on the page. So, you know, where things, the form starts matching. So we've got the let, you know, we're talking about eyes and then suddenly the text kind of makes the shape of an eye. Um, but, you know, on the surface, you're like, okay, it's a bit, you know, getting a bit experimental and a bit weird, but, you know, overall cool. Um, and again, I think what for me marks the difference between this and sort of other, where some experimental things fall down for me is kind of like the so what uh, factor of it. And for me, the raw shark texts, uh, which is also a great name, by the way, the kind of play on the raw, raw shark test um, is uh, really clever just because we get this idea of what are words and the kind of idea of letters and things having their own um, power and their own process and, and whatever. Then we get to this really exciting bit of the book. So we already get a little hint of what's coming uh, because we physically have a piece of text, hang on, there we go, uh, a piece of text on the page that's blurred um, intentionally. So it's been sort of messed up and we can't read it because the ink's been messed up. But obviously it's been printed to have that. So we, as the, as the readers, are kind of ahead on this joke, but also kind of made to subject uh, subjected to it which is brilliant anyway so we get this idea and we know that there's this idea of a shark and then suddenly we have a couple of blank pages in a row and then this little guy appears in the page and you don't really think that much of it and then he gets a little bit bigger uh this feels like story time with bob now but you essentially you start flicking through and i'm not sure how well this is going to work at this kind of distance but let's try and the shark slowly gets bigger and so it becomes almost like a flip book um until uh, the shark is there on the page, made of words, um, about to try and eat us. Um, and that is brilliant. And I remember the friend who recommended this book to me and was sort of raving about it said that she was actually genuinely terrified <laughs> when she flicked to that bit because she was just sort of flicking through and the shark was getting bigger and she was a little bit tense. And then suddenly the shark is there with its mouth open. And you know it's a picture and you know it's also a picture that is made out of letters. Uh, but somehow it's it's still shocking and, and brilliant. And then, you know, the end part of the book, we've got all these like, you know, newspaper clippings and a postcard and all these other kind of things. And again, I think this really, this kind of level of experimentation works just because as well, this is so experimental and so um, uh, and clever, but also has a plot. It has a story that you want to follow. Even if it had none of the experimental bits, it would be a good story and a story well worth following. But it's even better than that because it's super fun and you want to, you know, you've got all these kind of these things that play with your idea of the text. And, you know, if you've got a story where text is exploding and letters are escaping everywhere, it makes so much sense for the book to do that as well. Um, anyway, again, this brings me, as I mentioned earlier, to Maxwell's Demon by, um, by Stephen Hall. Um, so I was super, super excited about this. Um, anyway and then it just does so many clever things um you start getting these little uh 
footnotes early on and that starts kind of playing with our idea of sorry, there's, again bits of cat hair floating all over this the, you know lucky you you get to to see <laughs> the sparkle bits in the air anyway um but then early on ignore the random things i've used as cards including a coffee loyalty card for the national trust um but you know you start for example characters are on the phone and like listening to a message and so you start getting the play buttons on there at one point a character's in a lift and you the text just is at one point just the lift numbers of um, the lift going up and then um, you start getting bits like this um, where leaves that are sort of meant to be fallen and pressed in books suddenly have sort of filled in with words and as you're in those those bits they keep on directing to other leaves um, because they'll have little shapes of leaves as kind of um, points to kind of be like oh no to follow up more go to this leaf um, which is really clever and really fun anyway uh, but it just keeps on doing really clever things because pardon me the story just starts focusing around um, how much we can trust the main character or trust reality um, it starts going off on what seem like tangents at first um, about the idea of plotting um, a book with, uh, you know, the hero with a thousand journeys, um, I think that's the name of the book, um, uh, uh, or a thousand phases, something like that. But, you know, all these books about writing and about plotting and about how, you know, you have this grand reveal and you have these plots and characters follow certain routes. And the character themselves seems to follow it, which feels a bit sort of metatextual and a bit, you know, silly and experimental and cool anyway. But then it keeps on doing these really cool experimental things. Um, and again, I, I, I think... I, I think these things, you know, so he talk, starts talking about a philosophical theory, uh, 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 yeah, philosophical and sort of physical, physics-based theory um, about energy moving, and you get that on the text. Um, and it just keeps on kind of going into these ideas. So I, I think this is a book that is not only brilliant to kind of, I mean, I think it's brilliant overall anyway, um, but I think it's a book that kind of needs to be experienced in a really physical form because so, so much of it is about how the page works um, and is about how things move. Um, I really don't want to spoil this bit. I mean, there's a bit towards the end which I just found absolutely heartbreaking and beautiful. Um, but we, you know, we've got this, this picture of all these, uh, you know, all these leaves and the, at this point, um, what's really great is, uh, I, this won't spoil it, but in all of these bits of leaves, we have bits of text that have been elsewhere in the book. So you sort of start getting kind of being made to think. So I've just realised how, you know, you can see how pretty this bit is. Uh, but you start getting this sense of um, so many little Easter eggs that have been left for you during the book. So you can sit back and enjoy this book as just, you know, a story and be blown away by it. And, you know, you can also spend a lot of time digging into all of the lore and the ideas and, and things around it. Um, I sat and read this book in like one gulp, like literally several hours just just on this book um, and fell absolutely in love with it. Um, but then we get, but what's so clever is, you know, all this text kind of comes back and you suddenly think, okay, why is this relevant? Is this relevant? Is this just a joke by the author? Um, what's happening here? Um, and then you start realizing a really weird little silly thing. So in this dot that you saw in the last, so, you know, the last page, we've got this dot, you can't really see anything in it. The next page, um, you start seeing that there is what looks like, um, like a an ultrasound scan um, of a uh, fetus um, in that and you start thinking hang on what is happening the next page is that even more blown up and we start seeing a bit more and what then feels so powerful about this book for me is suddenly this book has kind of gone full on into uh, its universe so we've st started kind of being you know can we trust this character can we trust this person what's happening we've got people who we assume are character well who we are told are characters in a best-selling novel who suddenly appear in real life um, so we start wondering is the author you know the narrator sane um, are they seeing things or is this real and this is a really uh, you know they're the only one who sees this so far um, but then, because this, these kind of bits of text keep on coming back and bits of story keep on coming back, what is just so brilliant about this for me is you suddenly have these sort of aha moments of all these little Easter eggs that have been laid um, and sort of hidden throughout the book coming back in some form. So when something gets repeated to you that you heard back at the beginning of the book, um, that's really fun and clever um, and just really blew me away i absolutely adored it um i think as well uh there are some really fun um things that play with you as the reader um in the book which i thought was really great so quite early into the book 
um, there is a part where the character says, um, where the, the sort of the text sort of says, you know, uh, we're talking about the letter A essentially and a bit of the history of the letter A. Um, and it is relevant and it's linked to a few things. Um, but then it sort of talks about how often the letter A has been used thus far in the book. And we are told that the letter A has made up something like 8.134 or something percent of the text so far. And I thought that was brilliant on so, so many fronts, not only because it sort of jolts you out of your reality a little bit, or rather further into your reality, because you're reading a book, but the book is telling you something about what you've already read. Um, and so you're not only just reading a book and enjoying it, you are part of the process of making the book or of, of kind of creating it or of understanding it. And you're being told facts about a book that you're reading. Um, and so you're both reading a story, but you're also reading something that is reminding you that it's a book. Um, and the author is kind of coming back and sort of saying hello. Um, and also what I love about that as a separate point is I was thinking as I was reading that, how infuriating that part must have been to sort because essentially you can only have that number be exactly correct when you get to the final edit right because you might have if you edit if you take out or add any words into that first bit particularly if they have the letter a in it you have to completely change that number so you have to wait until the book's finally 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 done and then be like, right, how many letter, letter A's have we got in the first like 30 pages or something um, out of how many other letters to work out the percentage? Uh, I just thought it was brilliant. Um, and for me, uh, uh, I know that like, I've already sort of said this with a few books this year, but I mean like definitely right up there for me as one of my favorite books of the year already. I would be very surprised if I get to the end of the year and this book is still and is sort of out of the top 10, you know, for me. Uh, I just think this is so well done um, and is a book that's a real treasure. Like, you know, with, with a lot of books, I've been sort of getting into the habit of, you know, I read them, I enjoy them. And as much as I might want to reread them at another time, I will quite happily give them away to friends or sell them or give them to a charity shop because I, you know, I can always find it again online if I want to read it or get it from the library or whatever. Um, with this, this book is so physical, uh, like with uh, the Raw Shark Tech, Texts that I kind of don't want to break it up and um, uh, give it to someone else or, or you know it's not the same I think I I like the idea that at some point I can come back to this book and flick through and um, play around with it a bit and kind of look at things um, even if I don't reread it at the time I even if it's just to sort of look back and try and remember what the author did um, at some point um, it's interesting actually, I read afterwards that the um, author had also written for a couple of video games and it's interesting that I uh, sort of reading that because actually as I was getting towards the end of this book I was thinking how video game like this book feels um, and I don't mean that as, you know, you know, I don't mean that as an insult that it's failed as being a book, not at all. For me what's so brilliant about it is how it kind of blows out you know kind of explodes this idea of what a novel is and what a regular story is and starts feeling like you are a participant in this book in some way about how you interpret it how you play almost the choices you make in how you choose to read it you know do you read every single leaf that you see do you ignore them um do you really pay attention paying you know looking at every bit of law within the story or do you kind of let it wash over you how do you play this book how do you experience it um i just think it's brilliant <laughs> i'm not sure if you've managed to gather that so far from what i've been saying but i loved it and um uh, I kind of reached out to um, to Stephen Hall on um, Instagram and just kind of wanted to tell him just how much I adore this book because uh, it's always nice to hear I guess uh, but it's just absolutely brilliant and um, side point have a look at this how, how beautiful is this ah I sorry I I loved it <laughs> uh, anyway um, I hope that um, those have been interesting for you I hope that you um, enjoy kind of other experimental books that you might have read please do feel free to recommend some i am sure that there are experimental books i've read in the past that i've entirely forgotten when trying to make this video um but i'm really interested in, in when authors decide to play around 
with words on the page and make them do fun, exciting, different things. Um, and I think a lot of the ones I've been talking about today are such great examples of that exact thing. So um, yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts. Let me know if there are any other books I should be checking out uh, and take care and look after yourselves. Bye bye.